Welcome back to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. And we welcome you back to Talk of the Town for this Thursday, April the 30th. I'm Gary Stevens. No more open line time. We'll do it tomorrow. We will have Wells Spring from Spectrum Health Zealand Community Hospital following the top of the hour. But on this fourth Thursday of the month, or actually it is the fifth, but anyway, uh, it, we normally have our friends from the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners joining us. But in lieu of that, we have a Zoom connection and a, a, a combination connection today. Christina Wymick from the Ottawa County Department of Public Health and Patrick Sizzler. And uh, Patrick, of course, is involved with the nonprofits here in the Holland area. To both of you and our Zoom connection, good morning and glad you are with us. Good morning. Thank you for having us on the show. And Patrick? Yeah, thanks, Gary. I uh, appreciate that. Just want to make sure uh, there will be no problems in dis dis distinguishing who is who when you can join the conversation the old fashioned way at 395 1450, 395 1450. Extra time for you right now, Christina, because of the fact that we are dealing with COVID 19. But uh, uh, the, the updates are going to be a little bit less frequent now. Tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll bring Patrick into the conversation. Sure, so we were doing uh, briefings Monday through Friday, followed up with a daily bulletin, just to give some updates on what's going on in the county, our public health response, any other state updates. Um, but what we are doing now is gonna just condense that to Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We still have a lot of great information to share, um, but we do wanna just focus on those three days because as we're moving into the recovery process or reopening and re-engaging uh, businesses and society, we want to, I want to make sure I'm focusing a lot, too, on those plans and those projects. Now, is there a concern, Christina, on a health situation uh, that uh, while the numbers are flattening statewide, we have not seen the, we're not out of the woods yet, especially in West Michigan? Uh, that is correct. We're still anticipating um, an increase in cases. Uh, as expected, testing capacity has increased. There's, um, the state has now allowed more people to be able to be to be tested and we're going to see those numbers continually increase um, while we are going to experience that we are also seeing um, our numbers are relatively low compared to other places in the state and in the country um, i just want to commend everyone in the county who have been doing their part to stay you know hey just stay home and stay safe it's working uh, we're very fortunate to have, um, you know, those community mitigation strategies in place so we can help keep those numbers low. Now, some of us, of course, are in the essential services. Broadcasting is one of them. So uh, we are doing our jobs and, and getting the information out. We chatted with Patrick Sizzler about, I'd say, a little less than a month ago or around a month or so ago, uh, on, with, involved with the nonprofits here, but also, most importantly, Patrick, you've been involved in what is called careottawacounty.com. Uh, it got off the ground literally like a helicopter whew, right off the bat, and it has apparently continued to go very strong. Tell us a little bit about the latest on careottawacounty.com. Yeah, thanks, Gary. And I think it was about a month ago, and we were maybe two weeks in, and it, it did take off rapidly. And I'm I'm very grateful uh, that we were able to do that. It's I think we've had a lot of success. So um, again, careoutofcounty.com is our our primary website that we're funneling people to, and it it cropped up as a way to help engage the community in the human services response to COVID-19. And so. Uh, recognizing that a lot of our, our neighbors, our friends, our, our coworkers are, are really struggling through this. And certainly uh, this is a health crisis first and foremost, but there's a number of human services needs as people start to uh, not receive paychecks um, and that, that impacts their, their daily lives. And so um, kind of three of the top, top uh, focus areas for us have, has been around uh, keeping people fed, uh, so addressing food uh, insecurity, keeping people housed, um, as uh, again, as payments become a concern, and then mental health. Um, that the longer we're, uh, we're, we're a lot of us are stuck indoors, and anxiety and depression uh, starts to emerge. That we want to make sure people are caring for themselves. So, 
uh, Carradawa uh, County crept up in, in response to that. And it's really been amazing to see the community step up to the plate. Um, we have had, uh, just to give you some numbers here, over $800,000 donated uh, to, uh, to the fundraising efforts. Um, and so our two community foundations in Ottawa County, Grand Haven and Holland Zealand, as well as the Greater Ottawa, uh, Greater Ottawa County United Way have, have done a phenomenal job of raising that money uh, and have given away almost or over 650000 to date to, to frontline agencies um, to help keep people fed, housed, and care for their health. So uh, the funding side has been great. We've had hundreds of volunteers step up to the plate uh, are serving actively in, in the community. And we've also launched a couple uh, kind of neat, uh, kind of innovative campaigns out of this. So we have a grocery shopping model for seniors in our community, uh, which has, has really grown and, and taken off. So uh, seniors who don't want to get out of their house can call 211 and it will connect them with a United Way volunteer to go grocery shopping for them. And then another neat campaign, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stop for a moment, is the Stay Home and, and Fight Hunger campaign. Uh, where people uh, can can buy food, stuff a box, and donate it to Community Action House. Uh, and it was kind of a fun little campaign that Mike Gorehouse from the Community Foundation actually kicked off. And over 500, I stopped keeping count, but over 500 boxes have been donated uh, from local families to Community Action House to date, which is just amazing. Far exceeded, I think, our, our original expectations. Uh, by the way, we will have Mike Gorehouse joining us tomorrow on WHTC's Talk of the Town. He'll be happy to chat with, you, uh, with, all, with all of us and give us an update on that. Let me talk about the relationship between the Ottawa County Department of Public Health with Christina Wymink, as well as Patrick Sizzler, and again, the effort being careottawacounty.com. Talk a little bit about that relationship that your two entities do have. Uh, um, I want to say, can I dare say, working hand in glove in this type of situation, or uh, maybe just a little bit different? Yeah, try to explain that a little bit to us. Sure. Uh, well, the collaboration has been instrumental and crucial during this time. While we know this is a public health threat dealing with COVID-19, it is having a significant impact economically on people. Again, as Patrick mentioned, with mental health and isolation, and we could not do this in public health without the support of our community agencies uh, and working together to not only get the public health message out on what people can do to stay safe and stay healthy, but also to connect people with very much needed resources during this time. So uh, the collaboration has been excellent. Uh, we're continually communicating with one another and helping to share each other's resources to help out our community as much as possible. Patrick? Yeah, and, and I think I talked about this a month ago. Uh, one of the things that makes Ottawa County so unique is the level of collaboration that takes place. And, you know, we collaborate in when times are normal or times are good. And we're, we're seeing that in times of crisis, we can even collaborate even better. So I, I literally am on phone calls and, and Zoom calls three, four times a day uh, with different representatives from the health department. Uh, depending on the, the topic of, of focus and certainly on calls and texts with them in between the meetings. So uh, we, we do work very well together for sure. If you got a question for Christina Wyman from the Ottawa County Department of Public Health or Patrick Sizzler, who's involved with careottawacounty.com, you can join the conversation at 395-1450, 395-1450. Let me uh, uh, touch upon an email that I received or we received yesterday from Pine Rest uh, talking about a, uh, a new findings. And I'm just going to quote from the press release. Some sobering findings about the short-term and long-term impacts of the COVID-19 crisis in our state. A comprehensive assessment of the stressors bub bubbling up in our communities and the likely impact that they will have on the mental health of Michigan residents, including healthcare workers, surviving caregivers, children, and other vulnerable populations. And the report includes one particular statement that serves as a warning for us all, quote, Michigan will experience a mental health crisis as a result of the aftershocks of COVID-19 unless we act now. And again, uh, I will put this as a preface to you, Christina, you are dealing with the Department of Public Health, which is a little different than the mental health aspect. And there's a separate department in Ottawa County about that. But 
And Patrick touched upon it a little bit earlier, dealing with the mental health aspect of this. This might be a long-term problem that we're going to have to eventually get to uh, once we get the short term dealing with the health aspect of COVID-19 uh, uh, out of the way. Well, that's exactly right. We know already in uh, Ottawa County, access and treatment to mental health has been an ongoing issue. As you can see in our community health needs assessment that we've done for many, many years uh, with community agencies to develop the community health improvement plan, uh, which Patrick Sisler has also facilitated. So he's very familiar with the data. And given that we already have that issue, COVID-19 definitely expounds on that even more. So it is crucially important that people reach out to one another in your family, your friends, and know the signs of mental health crises and where to get help. And we have many of those resources on our website, miottawa.org forward slash CMH. And of course, people can always call 211. Patrick, and, and I hate to say it, you see it sometimes in the front lines with your, you know, your efforts with nonprofits as well. Not only uh, those who might be considering taking a drastic step, but also we're seeing a little bit more with domestic violence uh, uh, and domestic abuse uh, calls uh, on the increase. Unfortunately, people together and the usual outlets of trying to get away, they're not there right now. Right, right. Yeah, it's absolutely a concern. And in fact, I just got off a call with. Uh, 50 plus local nonprofits that they're concerned for their staff, you know, many who have been laid off or at home during this time. And, you know, I think what we have to be mindful of is, as Christina mentioned, mental health is a, certainly a concern during traditional normal times in our, in our community. They are highly escalated right now. And what I'm concerned about is I think people are experiencing anxiety and depression that have never experienced it before. Um, and so the message that I would like to share, Christina mentioned there's resources on their website. If anyone ha is experiencing any anxiety, depression, please call 211 uh, as, as a first layer of response and they will connect you with a local resource. Um, and if you, if you really feel like you're in crisis, please call Community Mental Health Hotline, which is, I'll, I'll share it here, 1-866-512. 4357. Uh, so again, if you're in crisis, contact Community Mental Health. But if you just need to talk to someone, please call 211. That's where we're sending a lot of, a lot of people. I don't want to sound alarmist and, but by bringing this up, but it's certainly uh, as much of an, uh, as a, a factor, Christina and Patrick, as the actual COVID-19 crisis is and uh, uh we can't we can't brush it up we cannot brush it under the, the the table we need to address this big big time absolutely now I totally agree now christina and patrick i mentioned something in, during the break about the upcoming cbs newscast about a drug trial that might offer some promise for a coronavirus treatment uh, that leads me to a point I wanted to bring up with both of you. We are looking for some treatment. We're looking for something to be able to get, see a light at the end of the proverbial tunnel with this situation. Uh, we, people have grasped on some of the things the president has said in some of his press briefings that frankly are a little you know, wild, but people are desperate to try to get out of this. And uh, I want both of you to sort of address this and try to put some perspective on the fact that, yeah, we want to get out of this. We want to get out of this safely. Well, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of information being shared. People have a lot of hopes on different things. And I just want to, want to remind everyone that while there are many things happening at this point, they still need to go through uh, federal regulations and making sure that the treatments that are being offered are safe and effective and that there are studies that are being conducted to prove that it is something that can respond to COVID-19. Um, now, I listen to the presidential briefings every evening, and I do hear Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks talk about uh, different things that are being worked on, and billions and billions of dollars have been put into research on not only treatment, but vaccines. So uh, we've had the um, pleasure of over decades of having time to research vaccines and help prevent some of those diseases. But with this new coronavirus, as everyone knows, we're on a new frontier. We are continually looking at different avenues and, and uh, drugs or 
things that will work for treatment. Uh, we're getting there. It just does take some time. So I want to caution everyone. If you hear of offers or um, you know scams of testing drugs uh, for treatment and things like that, please, please be cautious because only few things have gone through the federal regulations. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's kind of tough. And Patrick, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, people are frustrated right now, and and we're not a patient society and we've got to learn patience during this and during this time. Yeah. And I'll, I'll leave the response to, to treatment to the health <laughs> experts. So I think, I think Christina covered that well. Yeah. But uh, you know, again, you know, when you're dealing with the people in the front line, yeah. You know, what, what's that treatment? What's that treatment? Um, I'm going to throw something at you guys about the fact that um, it's not a health question. And it's not a public needs question, but it's just a perception question. And it, it struck me, you know, it, it sort of brought this home a little bit to me earlier this week. Holland Mayor Nathan Box uh, uh, put out a video basically telling visitors, don't come to Holland this week. Uh, don't see the tulips. They'll be back next year. Uh, of course, tomorrow, Saturday, would have started tulip time. Uh, but yet, you know, it just sort of brings that home that, you know, we're in a different situation now. And it's not like it would have been, say, on April 30th, and we're looking into spring and another, you know, nice weather for the weekend. Um, you know, we're in a different situation. And I, I think more than anything else, you know, what Mayor Box said sort of hit me like, yeah, we're in a different situation. I'm not asking you about the mayor's situation, but do you have a point at saying, you know, yeah, we're in a different world now and we got to adjust to this different world. We do. Um, the adjustments that we've had to make in society to adapt to what we need as far as staying home and staying safe, those are going to carry over into a uh, post COVID-19. Um, those are going to be the social distancing measures, uh, the telehealth, uh, Zoom meetings, all these different things. And even when we're going outside again to start enjoying the parks or next year at tulip time, you know, dealing, how do we work through large crowds and making sure that we are safe? So all these different prevention measures, again, of physical distancing, um, even wearing face cloth coverings in public, that may be something that we do for a while. Um, and of course, all the other disease prevention measures of washing your hands frequently and disinfecting. Um, so these are things that are going to continue to be the normal as we move forward. Um, and not only does this help prevent uh, the new coronavirus spread, but many, many other diseases. So um, society is making a paradigm shift during this time. Not only health-wise, Patrick, but also socially as well. I think we're, be, uh, to a certain extent, we're starting to become more cognizant of the needs of our community. And, you know, granted, Care out of a county might be just a short-term thing, but the needs will go far beyond uh, what we're going through right now. Yeah, absolutely, Gary. And I, again, I can't, I can't say enough about how the community has responded in this time of crisis with, with dollars and, and volunteerism. Um, and to your point, our community always has those needs. And, and so I would, you know, certainly encourage to step up during this time of crisis, um, but really hope that, that people will continue on beyond this. And, you know, you brought up tulip time and, and it's, a, it's a treasured tradition in our community. And so while I think people are stepping up extremely well with the human services needs, I'd also encourage people to think about organizations like tulip time that are, are absolutely being decimated by this, by this virus um, and consider supporting them as well. So uh, if them and, and other organizations um, that, that, you know, nonprofits that have their doors closed right now, uh, we put a video up on the careoutofacounty.com website about sharing the stimulus. And that, that's just one recommendation that, you know, for folks who are able, and I want to be very clear with that, those stimulus dollars are a huge help to a lot of families. But there's people like, like myself and my wife who have continued to work through this um, that don't necessarily need the dollars. Um, and, and so would encourage the community, donate to local nonprofits, buy gift cards to small businesses, get takeout from local restaurants, um, to, you know, it's stuff like that that's really going to help our community bounce back strong. Patrick Sizzler from the Lakeshore Nonprofit Alliance and Christina Wymick from the Ottawa County Department of Public Health. I want to thank you both for joining us today on WHTC's Talk of the Town. We will put links to not only the Department of Community Health, 
but also to careottawacounty.com. We put the audio podcast on our website at whtc.com. Uh, Christina and Patrick have been gracious enough to let us record the Zoom video that we're doing right now of this conversation, and we'll put that up on our Facebook page, 99.7 and 1450 WHTC, a little bit later on today. Christina? We're going to be talking with you and Sarah Dr. Slut on Wellspring in a few moments. Patrick, I know we'll be chatting again between now and hopefully the end of this, and it'll be sooner than later, not only for our chat, but also ending this as well. Thank both of you for joining us today on WHTC's Talk of the Town. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. And that is Christina Wymick along with Patrick Sizzler from the, in our Ottawa County board segment today. Coming up in a few moments, uh, we will have CBS News with Steve Kathan, WHTC News with Peg Nickel after that, and then Christina will be joining Sarah Donker's loot for Wellspring from Spectrum Health Zealand Community Hospital on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC. <laughs>